beating Michigan. This year will be Ryan Day's biggest obstacle during his time at Ohio State. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in, Buckeye fans, to a Tuesday edition of Locked On Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Here on Tuesday, August 13th in the year 2024. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like you want them to. But this summer... FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Every college football coach has obstacles during any season. Maybe it's year one. Maybe it's year 13. Maybe it's year 25. But every college football coach has obstacles. Ryan Day, an obstacle he faced right away, was coming in right after Urban Meyer retired. That's a major obstacle. But in regards to this season, there's a major obstacle that the Buckeyes will face in game number 12, and it will be the biggest obstacle Ryan Day will have faced during his time at Ohio State, and that is that Michigan game and beating Michigan this year is that big of an obstacle. Now, I know that this is fall camp time, and I know that the Buckeyes are preparing for the season, but they have also been preparing for that Michigan game. And Ryan Day understands, hey, that's the biggest game of the year. You need to win that game if you want to get to the Big Ten Conference Championship game the following week. If you lose, you still might get there, but it's not in your hands. You're not taking care of business and making sure you're there no matter what. But think about what Ryan Day has done and has gone through during his time at Ohio State so far. I mentioned one earlier, coming in right after a legend in Urban Meyer. That's a major obstacle, and he's done a way better job than anybody thought he would following the legend, Urban Meyer. Also, 2020, overcoming that Clemson bug, the Clemson hurdle. That was huge. Going from the the catastrophic loss in 2019 to the blowout in 2020, Ryan Day did something big in that year. The players did amazing things that year, and they overcame that Clemson bug, the Clemson battle. What else do you find? You also found that Ryan Day has kept things in the recruiting at the same level as Urban. Actually, he may have taken it up a notch over Urban in some areas, so he's doing something there. Recruiting isn't a major obstacle every year. Ryan Day has made the college football playoff multiple times, has made the national championship one time. Those are major obstacles you have to, you have to get over along the way to get there. Those are also major accomplishments. But beating Michigan this year is different, man. Not just losing to them one year, not just two years, but three years in a row, especially last year when things didn't go Ohio State's way that game. They still had a shot to win it. Ultimately, they did not win that thing. And what do we have now? A lot of pressure on Ohio State during that game. And I've said it once, I'll say it again, and I'll say it all season until that game is played. I am personally not ready to come out here and say Ohio State's automatically going to win that game. Now, you may say, Jay, what are they, nine and a half, ten point favorites? You should be comfortable saying that. Aren't you an Ohio State fan? Yes, but I'm also a realist. And one thing about Ohio State is there may be a mental block, a major mental obstacle in the players' minds right now, weeks and months before the game is even played. Why? Because it's weighing on you. Numerous Ohio State players decided to come back to school, stay in school, instead of going to the NFL, partly because they don't have gold pants, which is what Ohio State players get when they beat Michigan. You get a pair of gold pants, and that means a whole lot. If you go through your entire career at Ohio State, you don't have a pair of gold pants, and you're a four-year, five-year guy. I understand if you're a one- or two-year guy, you transfer out, a couple years you're there, the Buckeyes don't beat the Wolverines. Which is rare, but I understand if that's your circumstance. But if you're Denzel Burke or Jack Sawyer or Tui Maloa or any of these other guys that have been around for a long time and don't have a pair of gold pants, and maybe you're someone that came in in 2020, oh, uh, COVID, and you still don't have a pair of gold pants, you may be saying, Look, I want that. I, I want to get that. But then you go into your mind, Man, the last three times you played these jokers, they've won. Sometimes they've been more physical. 
sometimes they made bigger plays. They've made more plays in these games. That's a major obstacle. And for Ryan Day, some people are saying Day is on the hot seat. Some people are not going that far. Whichever side of the argument you're on right now, Ryan Day understands. You can't keep losing to Michigan. And these aren't my words. These are the things that I believe. Of course, I believe this. But these aren't the things that, well, I am not the decision maker. I'm not Ross Bjork. I'm not a part of the athletic department at Ohio State. But they all believe the same thing. You can't keep losing to Michigan. And I'm not saying Ryan Day is going to get fired at the end of the year if they lose to Michigan. I do believe there are ways that Ryan Day can keep his job, even if that game is a loss once again for the fourth year in a row. But, man, talk about obstacles. Talk about so many things that may go your way, and all of a sudden in that game they don't go your way. That game right there, a major obstacle. And, yes, it is a the biggest obstacle, the toughest obstacle Ryan Day would have faced, at least to that point in the season, during his time at Ohio State. But personally, right now, I think Ohio State's ready for that test. I, I, I truly do. Um, people are wondering, hey, is whoever the quarterback is, are they battle-tested? Are they ready? Well, there's only one quarterback out of the five scholarship quarterbacks at Ohio State that is battle-tested, that we've seen on the field. Not the squad in gray consistently, but at another school in the Power 5 level, the then Power 5 level. And what do we find? Will Howard, battle-tested. Will Howard, a gamer. Will Howard, rose to the occasion. Will Howard use his legs in some of the biggest games of his career to move the ball down the field, use his arm during numerous big games during his career to move the ball down the field. And so, yes, I personally believe if it's just a quarterback, hey, they're in a good spot. But when you look up and down the roster from wide receiver to the old line to the D line to the linebackers to the running backs to the tight ends to the secondary, what do you find? They're ready. This is a roster right now that can stop Ohio State's three-game losing streak to Michigan. That's on paper. I even think on the field, they're going to be so good to watch. But what do we know about big games? Some coaches, they just don't have it in those big games. Some coaches do. I am not saying names, but I know my brother used to be a volunteer coach at a high school, and him and some of his guys that he played football with, he was volunteering for a coach, the coach that coached him, I, I believe at least one year during his time playing high school football, not saying the coach's name, but this coach, numerous players have told me, that he's my buddies, I mean, I knew these guys, we played ball together, and they said, look, man, he's not a big game coach. He kind of shuts down. He kind of folds it in. Well, Ryan Day is a big game coach. We have seen Ryan Day in some big moments not do the best, make the best decisions. But what? No coach is 100%. Saban isn't. Kirby Smart isn't. Ain't no coach 100%. But also what we find is that Ryan Day, Clemson 2020. Ryan Day, Georgia, in that game there. What do we find? Even that Rose Bowl. Well, Ryan Day even admitted like, hey, Jackson Smith and Jigba and Stroud were just in such a rhythm you didn't really, really really didn't have to look at the call sheet cool but even in that rose bowl ryan day rose to the occasion the players rose to the occasion so yes some guys aren't big game coaches some guys are some guys fold during big moments some guys don't whatever side of the argument you think ryan day is on he can't be that he cannot be the negative or the downward part this year cannot happen you can't fold in a michigan game you can't just throw in the towel figuratively you can't do it not at all. That's a big test. That's a big obstacle. But I also think the Buckeyes are in a good spot right now to beat the Wolverines this year and to snap that three-game losing streak to the team up north. Now, the Buckeyes and the Wolverines, that's a big obstacle. But that's only one obstacle if all they will face this year. There are others, and some will be, and one of them will be, teams that might pose a threat to Ohio State to make sure they don't play in the Big Ten Championship game this year. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much, I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games, and the sports aren't sportsing like I want them to. FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone, every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com 
and start making the most out of your summer. Once again, make sure you head over to FanDuel.com. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Thank you for making Locked On Buckeyes your first listen of the day. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked On College football podcast. Spencer McLaughlin gets you ready for an exciting season on the gridiron with discussion on the upcoming season and the ever-changing landscape of college athletics, including conference realignment, the transfer portal, NIL, new college football expanded playoffs, and more. Locked On College football is available on YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. Part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team, Every day. Threats to Ohio State making and playing in the Big Ten Conference Championship game are real. A lot of teams out there are trying to make sure they can do what is needed when they play the Buckeyes to win and ultimately make sure Ohio State does not have a chance this year to play in the Big Ten Championship game. Now, I, for one, a person that I try to be as realistic as possible. And I try to make sure that when I talk about certain things, I'm not trying to be completely biased, but open-minded in regards to certain situations. And yes, it would be very easy for me right now to say, oh, there is nobody, nobody at all in the Ohio State schedule that is a threat to them outside of the big three schools that are, we all know on the schedule, the biggest games of the year, Michigan, Penn State, Oregon. However, I can't do that. I cannot sit up here and legitimately tell you right now, as I speak into this microphone and say, those are the only threats. That'd be stupid. That wouldn't be smart. That would not be the wise analysis that we want here on the show. It would be hashtag poor analysis, and we don't want that anywhere near us here on Locked on Buckeyes. And so when it comes to Ohio State, yes, the biggest threats to Ohio State not playing the Big Ten Conference Championship game, that is correct. It would be the game against Penn State the game against Oregon, and then also the game against Michigan. Those are the top three. But let's not forget one thing about Ohio State's schedule this year. You got Oregon on the road. Let's backtrack a little bit. You got Iowa at home. I mean, their offense is atrocious, so that should be a win. Unless their defense is like 85 Bears good. I don't think it will be. <clears throat> You're going to find that. Ohio State should be Iowa by 20 plus points uh, at least because uh, their offense, once again, is not that good. On the road at Oregon, you're, you got an off week. That Nebraska game is still kind of a nervous one for me. It's homecoming for Ohio State. The game, the time and kickoff has not been announced yet. So we'll definitely track that and update everyone about that when that comes out. But that Nebraska game, Nebraska's one of those teams, especially under Matt Rule right now that you cannot sleep on. It's realistic for Nebraska to be rolling into Columbus, Ohio, undefeated at that point in time on October 26th. Yes, it's the final weekend before Halloween, so it might get a little spooky around Columbus, Ohio. It might be a little spooky uh, that when Nebraska comes into town, we all know wild and crazy things happen during that time period. But don't sleep on Nebraska. Now, do I think Nebraska is going to be one of the top two teams in the in the conference at the end of the, end of the regular season? Absolutely not. Like, I don't think they're going to actually play in the Big Ten Championship game this year. However, they can play spoiler. They can put Ohio State on upset alert. They can do that. And so, yes, if you want to just focus on Oregon, Penn State, Michigan, be, be my guest. You can. That would not be hashtag board analysis. Only if you didn't stop there. Make sure you expand it a little bit and look at now. Do I really think Michigan State's a big threat? Will they be that good? No. Rebuilding. Northwestern. Yeah, the wind in Chicago is going to be a little weird, but I doubt it'll be weirder than it was the last time Ohio State played Northwestern. Now, that was in Evanston, which is not far from Wrigley Field. But still, like, what are we talking about? Like, it's not going to be that drastic. Not It won't be like that. So, no, and plus, I mean, to play in the Wrigley Field, it's Northwestern. That realistically could be an Ohio State home game. Ohio State fans travel well, travel like one of the best traveling fan bases in the entire country. So that game could very well be one of those games where it is Ohio State. And uh, uh, it's basically, I mean, what, 40,000 plus in Wrigley Field. And it wouldn't shock me if 75% of those fans were Ohio State fans. Why? It's just what we do. I mean, it's just what we do. Ohio State fans show up and show out in a way that most other schools can't. 
I mean, they may want to, but y'all, they can't. But keep it honest. Do I think Indiana, Northwestern, or Purdue will actually pose a threat and be good enough to put Ohio State upset upset alert? Absolutely not. Do I think Western Michigan or Marshall or Akron or Michigan State will be good enough to put Ohio State on upset alert? Absolutely not. It's literally four games. Four games. And if you could really windle it down to three, we're going to expand it a little bit for four. Four games. That's it. But those are legitimate threats. Also, you know another threat that to Ohio State not being in the Big Ten championship game? No. I ain't talking about the injury bug because that sometimes comes back to hit Ohio State when you don't want it to. You never want the injury bug to hit your locker room. However, if things get a little shaky, uneasy, somebody may become a cancer or two in the locker room, if they may self-implode, if this t- season where it's down to your bust, if all of a sudden somebody gets outside of themselves or really reveals them their true selves and they say, oh, Natty, you're bust, huh? Well, it ain't, it's not going to look like that right now because I'm I'm losing faith in us being able to really go out and win, accomplish all of our goals. If that actually happens, that's a real threat. So, yes, there are things on the schedule, but also there are things outside of the schedule that could be threats to Ohio State to win and play in the Big Ten Championship game this year. Now, reality is, once again, like the previous segment, Ohio State should be one of the top two teams in the conference. The Pitt State game is going to be tricky. Really, really tricky. Because my gut is telling me right now, one, Ohio State will not go undefeated this season, and two, they're going to lose one of those three big games. Probably one of the road games. Got no how field about Penn State, so it's probably going to be that Oregon game. Yes, Ohio State should beat Michigan. They should beat Oregon. They should beat Penn State. But my gut is telling me Ohio State's going to lose one of those three big games. We just dwindle it down, and I just basically walk this down the path to talk about which game I think Ohio State is actually going to lose. Why? It's tough. Very, very tough. Now, I understand, and I know that Ryan Day, the last time he played the Ducks in the game, it did not go their way. That was 2020 Stroud's second start. And that was, that game, even though the offense was not clicking like you wanted it to, yeah, the defense couldn't set the edge for nothing. Absolutely nothing. Was it 2021, I think? 2020. Whichever one it was, it was one of them games, man, where, look, <laughs> I'm sitting here watching the game, and I'm like, I'm getting so confused, so, so frustrated. Set the edge, set the edge, set the edge, and they just weren't doing it. Weren't doing it at all. So I know when we talk about Ryan Day and the obstacle that beating Michigan will be this year, realistically, in that same conversation, in that same segment, we went over, hey, a big obstacle Ryan Day already overcame was a Clemson obstacle. Well, hey, Ryan Day remembers what it was like to coach against Oregon and ended up losing that game to Oregon. Hey, Ryan Day remembers that. This is one of those times that Ryan Day can do the same thing that happened with the Clemson game, that Clemson obstacle. Come in there and light it up. Just light that thing up. And go out there and show everybody, look, you know what happened last time, but this is what we are right now. We're going to light that scoreboard up, touchdown after touchdown after TD after TD after trip to pay dirt, after trip to the end zone. Why? Because that's just what Ohio State is going to do, and Ryan Day is going to be motivated in such a big way to destroy the Ducks on that day on October 12th, which is going to be a phenomenal day of college football. If you don't have plans that day, don't make any. Don't, Don't make any. Plans are to watch the ball. There's going to be a lot of good ball on your television on that day. Speaking of on good television, good ball on your television this year, there will be a lot of good ball in the playoff this year. How should Ryan Day handle the expanded playoff? We'll dive into that next. This episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. 
Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Thank you for making Locked on Buckeyes your first listen every day. The expanded playoff is going to provide a different level of anticipation, a different level of anxiety, a different level of nerves for everybody involved. The people in the playoff committee, the people that's the executive, I forget his name, the director of the of the playoff, the players, the coaches, the fans, the broadcasters, is going to bring a different level of all of those things and then some when that thing gets underway in the middle of December. How should Ryan Day navigate a 12-team playoff? Because that's going to be a major obstacle in and of itself. Do you want a buy? Absolutely. You want to win conference, so you want a buy. Now, maybe, maybe in your heart of hearts, you're a coach that says, no, I truly want my team to play week one. That, that bye week could be detrimental. The let the more time off could be bad for the body. So ultimately, your, your coach may say, "No, I truly want the the I truly want to play, but also want to win a conference championship." So I'm sitting here saying, "Well, do you want that buy?" And the reason you want the buy is because you want that trophy before the playoff starts, which is a conference championship trophy. You got a trophy, you got a ring. Yeah, y'all setting yourselves up for success. Y'all doing pretty well for yourselves. And so with that in mind, yes. Ryan Day won win conference. It's going to be tough. It's going to be very tough. It's going to be, you could have a rematch against Oregon, against Penn State, against Michigan. Now, I said I don't believe that Nebraska is going to be a team that's actually in the running for this this year. However, if they play better than advertised, it could be against Nebraska. You could legitimately be a, a team this year at Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship game with it being one versus two and no divisions, you could have a rematch. That's a major obstacle. So being able to make the 12-team playoff, yeah, Ohio State should make it no matter what every single year. It's just now is that an elitist thing to say? Maybe, but Ohio State's generally one of the top 12 teams in the country every single season. That's reality. And so when it comes to the playoff, yeah, you got, you want to win your conference. Take that by. But you got to maximize every single day, every single second, every single rep, every single snap during preparation. What you're going to find is also, as I recently saw on the Twitter that Notre Dame recently did, they altered their final schedule so it did not interfere with college football playoff games. Because these are still student athletes. Yes, I know the NCAA has coined the term for a reason, but reality is they're still student athletes. They got to keep their grades up. They got to handle the, the classroom work. They got to do all of these things. And so, yes, I know life as a, an athlete is different than life as a regular student when it comes to the academics. However, still got to keep their grades up. And so you got to deal with finals. When before, Ohio State's playing a playoff game in the December, beginning of January. Finals had been over for over a week. You're just worried about ball. But now you're literally preparing for the the biggest game of the year at that point with the most stakes at hand while also preparing for finals. That's reality. So Ryan, Day has to manage that Ryan Day has to do all these things. You got to figure out how one, how do you manage the finals, the academics Two, how do you prepare when you may have a buy or you may not have a buy? How do you prepare for those moments? Also, you got to make sure you're doing things in the season to keep your body healthy. Take care of your body, nutrition, recovery, the workouts, all those things go hand in hand, the sleep, all those things go hand in hand to the Ohio State Buckeyes doing and being the best team they could be this year. All that stuff is very, very important. But keep this in mind, though, when it comes to a 12-team playoff. You might play 16 or 17 games this year. Your body might not be able to handle it. Also, Ryan Day has to figure out how in the world are we going to handle these rotations? Are we going to play four D linemen and not rotate at all? Are we going to play six D linemen? Are we going to play eight O linemen? Will it be a two linebacker rotation? Well, it really wouldn't be a rotation. Will it be three linebackers out there? Okay, who are the starters or is that interchangeable? 
what's the secondary look like? Are we going to rotate guys in? Jermaine Matthews Jr. is really good, but so are our Hancock and Nick Vinosin and Burke. Really, as good as Matthews Jr. is, you don't need to play him because he's not one of your top three corners at Ohio State this year. You got to figure out how you navigate the, the season this year with the expanded playoff and make sure you're take, helping the players take care of their bodies, figure out the rotation as quickly as possible. One thing I witnessed over the weekend watching some preseason football is that Jonathan Taylor, this is something that came home to me via notification. I was actually watching the game, didn't realize he was the first player to wear a guardian cap in a game. Now, it's a preseason. We have all seen, many of us have seen pictures of, of players wearing some type of protective covering over the helmet during practice. It's a guardian cap. It's more protection for the head, and which is very, very important. We all know that there could be lawsuits and things like that, which get really ugly, get really tricky. Don't try to go down that road. However, protecting the head is very, very important. Something else Ryan Day must figure out how to navigate in route to a 12-team playoff is to coach the player communication. Because for the first time in college football history, there will be an avenue for a coach to communicate with a player, one player on offense, one player on defense, up until there are 15 seconds left in the play clock. Once that 15-second mark hits, that level of communication is cut off, and then you just go out there and can't communicate with your coach. Now, the one thing, one luxury Ohio State has here is that both Ryan Day and Chip Kelly have dealt with this in the NFL. So it's not like they're going into this and just trying to figure it out and wing it and hope their contacts and the people they use to help them and their mentors just figure it out. No, they have their own experience. They know what works for them. They know what didn't work previously, but you got to figure out what works with the guys. Now, my guess is on defense is Cody Simon. I guess, or my belief, I know, that the guy on offense is going to be the quarterback. That's such a great avenue for communication. It's a great added thing that should have been here in college literally 25, 30 years ago. Like, there was no reason why this should not be a part of college football. The money has been there. The funds have been there. If they weren't, somebody could sponsor it. So be it. You had to tell me a company that wouldn't want to sponsor something that is going to be on at then, what, about 110 universities, and now it's up to 134 FBS schools. You mean to tell me somebody would not want to sponsor, put their name and their logo on that? Please. Absolutely they would. These are some obstacles Ryan Day and the Buckeyes will face this year. Speaking of the 12-team playoff, it's a wild and crazy world. My gut says that thing is going to be expanded sooner than you think. And if you're like me, you're not going to like it. But just got to realize this is the way of college football. This is what's going to happen now. It is going to continue to happen. Thank you for making Locked On Buckeyes your first listen today. Now go check out the Locked On College Football Podcast from NIL deals to never-ending conference realignment rumors. Spencer McLaughlin gets you ready for an exciting season on the gridiron. You can find the link to Locked On College Football in the description so you don't need to search part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. You can follow me on X at jsteven07. We're up out of here on a Tuesday, Buckeye fans. We'll see you next time.